end of the year and we've been working really hard. Yeah, I'm glad we get a chance to uh, relax and to look back and make some cookies. Right, let's, let's get started. Let's get our cookie recipe by saying, hey Google, show me a sugar cookie recipe from Jessica's baking app. Fantastic, let's get all the ingredients together. So being able to open an Android app with Google Assistant is super fun. A lot has happened this last year, especially in the world of App Actions. Uh, app Actions actually made a pivot this year to be part of the Android framework. That's a new feature, Jessica. Can you tell us more about it? Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> so Capabilities is a new Android framework API that allows you to declare the types of actions users can take to launch your app and jump directly into performing a specific task. So now you can actually use app um, capabilities for app actions by creating shortcuts.xml file resources and defining your capabilities. You can think of capabilities as having two parts. The first part is all about how it gets triggered, and the second part is what to do once it's triggered. And to add a capability, you'll need to select a BII or built-in intent, which is a predefined and pre-built intent that provides all the natural language understanding that is mapped to a user's input to that individual fields. And so when a BII or built-in intent is matched by the user's request, your capability will be triggered an Android intent that will deliver the understood fields to your app so then you can determine what to show as the response so the user will actually be able to see inside your app. Oh, that's really cool. I heard that app actions can show up when my users say, hey, Google, show my shortcuts. Yeah, totally. So when a user does say that, they say, hey, Google, show my shortcuts, you'll be able to see all of your personalized shortcuts, which can include app action shortcuts. For a developer to be able to do that, you'll need to use the Google Assistant or the Google Shortcut Integration Library to push your dynamic shortcuts to the Assistant. Assistant can suggest relative shortcuts to your users at contextually relevant times. And did you know that we have a collab that walks developers through pushing dynamic shortcuts to Assistant? Of course I didn't. Didn't we work on creating a whole learning pathway for App Actions developers? Yeah, we, we totally did. You're right, Tony. So we built out an App Actions pathway that takes, app, um, takes developers from zero to implementing their first capability to pushing dynamic shortcuts with our videos and collabs. So what's something that you're excited about with all these new changes? Oh, gosh. Um, I think I'm really, really excited about how Assistant can use Android widgets when a user um, needs to handle things that are hands-free, kind of like baking or when you're in the car with Android Auto. You can integrate your widgets to be responses for the situations when users need a simple answer or a quick interaction. My favorite part is that since it, it's for hands-free um, experiences, you can actually add text-to-speech to your widget. And then in that space, there's a lot or a few kind of conversation design principles that can help Android developers to provide a great voice experience to their users. Let's see. Oh, it looks like this is the last bit of sugar I have. So, hey, Google, add some sugar to my shopping list. Oh, this isn't a no-bake cookie recipe. Better heat up the oven. Hey Google, preheat the oven to 350 degrees. Hey, speaking of device control, what's new in Smart Home? Well, we're going to be launching a new developer center for developing smart device integrations. This will enable developers to quickly onboard their Matter compatible devices once the Matter spec launches next year. That sounds really neat. Any exciting news for tools available for developers? Oh yeah, definitely. So we have the new Google Home Playground, which will help you set up a virtual environment to test out different device types and traits, which is really great for beginners or if you haven't played around with it much. You can change the attributes of the devices and see how these interact in Home Graph. And once you're ready to actually start coding, you can use the Google Home IDE to develop your smart device integration, view the cloud logs, and use the Google Assistant simulator all from a single place. Oh, the cookies are done. Hey Google, turn off the oven. That reminds me, we've also been making sample utterances available in different languages in our docs to help with testing your smart devices. There's a bunch of additional new tools from this year as well, including app discovery, better monitoring dashboards, BLE seamless setup, and more, including follow-up responses for some traits. You can find out more about all of this in the docs. There's lots of news in the world of Assistant and Smart Home this year for sure. But what about conversational actions? Definitely, we had a busy year over here too. Hey Google, show me videos about decorating cookies. 
We rolled out an updated Actions for Families program for conversational actions, which is meant for developers building family-oriented actions like games, stories, or educational apps for kids. Back in May at Google I.O., we shared some tips on things to consider when you're putting together a marketing plan for your conversational actions. We also heard from folks across the voice tech ecosystem each month on the Webby award-winning talk show, Voice Talks. We had great segments from experts across the industry, including many Googlers who work on Assistant. We also rolled out some features for developers of conversational actions to take advantage of, right? Yeah, we sure did. We recently released the interactive Canvas DevTools. This is a browser extension designed to help devs speed up their workflow when building the web app portion of interactive Canvas actions. You can find the dev tools in the Chrome Web Store, or if you really want, you can compile and install them yourself from the repo on GitHub. Let's see, what else? In addition to some updates to the NLU that powers assistance voice recognition, we added support for several new SSML features within conversational actions. For example, you can now fine tune the pronunciation of specific words within your actions or change languages mid-sentence. It's pretty cool, oh, muy genial. Well, I'm, I'm certainly not an expert cookie decorator yet, but this is a start maybe? Uh, I hear you, I'm with you, Mike, no worries. <laughs> we did a lot over this last year, and if only there was a really convenient blog post that people can check out to get all of the resources that we've mentioned today, and even more info. Luckily, there is. You can check out the link in the description below to get the blog post. We'll see you in the new year. Happy holidays. Happy holidays.